attention to a specific subject. But before I get into that subject, I really want to do a couple things real quick. Anybody got their Bible that, that don't mind going to Genesis 14 and 6, I believe it is. Anybody that has a Bible, if you don't mind, if you want to go to Genesis 14 and 6, I believe the scripture is now. And, and uh, I wanted to uh, just kind of work and show you a couple things. And remember, if you remember a few lectures ago, I was showing everybody that we're in a cycle of six. We're going in the cycle of six. 2017 was introducing us to the cycle of six. But now we're looking at actually being in the cycle of six. And the cycle of six is a serious cycle because during that cycle, the man of perdition, the son of sin, has to be revealed during that. Also, that man that's going to be revealed is going to be directly linked with the mark of the beast. Are y'all listening? Mm -hmm. So we're in that cycle. We're going to deal with some of that today. And I want to just start out by going 14.6 with the Genesis and see what we have. 14.6? Yes, ma'am. I hope that's right. Yeah, Genesis 14 and 6. Um, I might not pronounce all these words correctly, but okay. y'all bear with me. Okay. And the Horites in their mouth, Sair, unto El Paran, uh -huh. which is by the wilderness. Okay. Continue. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. And they returned and came to Emesphat, uh -huh. which is Kadesh. Uh -huh. And smote all the country mm -hmm. of the Amalekites, mm -hmm. and also the Amorites mm -hmm. that dwelt in Hazor Tormar. Now stop right there. You don't have to go any further. We're going to come back to it. I want to open up with this. Hold that scripture. We're going to come back and deal with that scripture. But before I come back and deal with it, let me deal with a couple things real quick. So, as you know, God works within a system. And God uses things that are within our own reach to give us understanding. One of the things that we understand that he says that know that when leaves are starting to come back on trees, that what? Spring is near. That's right. Right? Now, he gives us these things for discernment. But he didn't just give us leaves for discernment. He gave us circumstances and situations for discernment. How do we know, Brother Quentin, that Moses is coming? Well, how do we know when he's on the scene? This is how we know. Because circumstances and conditions that were back in the day of the biblical Moses will be before us today. Are you following me? Yeah. Right? So God fashioned this thing so that we could be able to discern other things. How do we know that rain is coming? <laughs> because a warm front makes contact with the cold front and produces something called rain. Isn't he a master scientist? Yes, yes. Of course he is. So now, if we can understand that, right? Yeah. Then let's try to understand this. Stay with me for a second. Now, when we look at this thing, right? In the cycle of six, this is a pre uh, a, a preliminary uh, dropping that I want to give you before we get into the actual lecture. If we look at the cycle of six, which we dealt with this subject some time ago, but I wanted to just go a little bit more on to it. This year is 2018, right? Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Those leave. So understanding that it's 2018, and I told you 2017, we're entering the cycle of six. So 2018 should give birth to six as well. Because we're entering the cycle. So as long as we're on this earth, then the cycle will continue to do what it does. So in understanding that, then 2018, what is it? 20 times 18 equals 360. Right? So you got a 6 three times. Are you with me? Right? 2 times 18 simply is 36. Right? You got a 6 three times. We're dealing with cultural science that a lot of us have been moved away from, but let's bring some of it back in. Now, look at this. 1 plus 8 equals what? 9 times 2 equals 18. 18 is three sixes, right? Yeah. Are you staying with me? Yeah. Okay, so the man of perdition, the son of sin, mark of the beast, has 
Christ to reveal himself, I'm going on a limb. I'm not on a limb. I'm speaking to you to let you know that this year, Brother April, 2018, we're going to see the marking of the beast, and we're going to see the man of perdition. Now, watch this. Two times one equals two times eight equals 16, right? One times six is six, right? I'm showing you the cycles now. Stay with me for a second, and we're going to move out of this. Does anybody know who was born June 14, 1946? Stand up, son. Who? Donald J. Trump. <laughs> now watch this. One times nine is what? Nine. Four times six is what? 24, right? Nine times 24 is 216. You get your three sixes all over again, right? Now watch this. Stay with me. He was born month of June, six month. One, one, plus four, plus one, equals six. Why am I doing this? Because from here on out, if you remember, when we were talking about the cycle of six, some of you weren't here, but let's go back. I told you on November the 21st, we're in that cycle. We entered the cycle of six. Then, right, on December the 6th, you saw the announcement that the new Jerusalem was going to be the capital. Jerusalem was going to be the capital of Israel, right? Then, six days after that, what you saw is the train crash, right, that was in, where was it at? Uh, in Washington State, and the number of the train was what? Six, seven. 501, which equals six, right? Yeah. So all of this was laid out. But check this out. Do you know that that train made 18 stops? And do you know that 18 is six, six, and six? What I want you to see is that we're in the cycle of six, right? Now, I know that we've been taught that this may be something called numerology. I know that you've been taught not, not to study the signs out there and what you call the heavens. I know you've been taught that. But God laid them out there for us That's to study. Right. right? But you've been taught not to study these things. But what I'm telling you is that there are lessons in these things. Mm -hmm. So let's move. All right. Everybody okay? Yes. All right. You know, you know how we flow. If you have any questions, just raise your hand. The lecture title today, real simple. The day of a new king that knew not Joseph. I want to give you some backdrop a little bit. The day of the new king that knew not Joseph, right? So we're in a time frame where Joseph, who was the governor of Egypt, had to have been on the scene. We've never in the history of this country, once the United States of America became the United States of America, we've never in the history of this country had a black man or an ex-slave or descendants of a slave to rule. Am I right or wrong? Right. Okay, so now, if a black man comes on the scene that becomes governor in Pharaoh's house, also known as Egypt, right, then we got to be looking biblically of the association with this ruler and the Bible. The president, Barack Obama, I just want to paint this backdrop. He was a man who was given a coat of many colors, his father. Listen, he was Christian, well, he was a Muslim, then he was a Christian, he's black, and he's white. Okay. Also, Joseph, spiritually, was an interpreter of dreams. Did y'all hear about that book, Dreams of My Father? Who wrote that book? President Obama, he wrote the book, Dreams of My Father, right? As you very well know, Joseph was thrown into jail. Joseph became an interpreter of dreams. And when the king had a dream, nobody could interpret it but Joseph, right? So he applauded the king. Now, I don't have these pictures because after he applauded the king, they put gold around his neck. But those of you that have been to the study group, you've seen me show you the pictures when Barack Obama went to Saudi Arabia. They gave a gold ring and gold necklace. Now, so, President Obama became governor in Pharaoh's house, right? We saw that, and he served two terms, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you how bad he was. When his brothers came, they didn't know who he was. But President I mean, Joseph fed his brothers, 
Because he understands himself to be the keeper of his brothers. Do you know that the president introduced the program in 2012 called My Brother's Keeper? Are y'all listening to me? Mm -hmm. okay. It's a nonprofit program that nonprofit organizations can pull, for, pull from to support the livelihood of young black men, specifically, or men of color. I'm just giving you some backdrop as we lead ourselves into this now. In the book of Exodus, chapter 1, verse 8, which we're getting ready to go to, it says, Then there arose a new king that knew not Joseph. Are y'all with me? All right, so let's deal. The day of a new king that knew not Joseph. What I want to demonstrate today is that this is in fact the time that we're in. We are in the time that this king comes on the scene, Brother Liverman, that does not know Joseph. Can I prove it? The Bible has already proven it. Watch this. Let's get to it. So now, it's in the book of Exodus 8 and 1. Look at what it says. And the Lord, now we're going to Exodus 1 and 8, this is 8 and 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go. I want you to notice a couple things real quick. Now, first of all, who spoke to Moses? The Lord spoke to Moses, right? And when the Lord spoke to Moses, he's telling him to go and talk to a man called Pharaoh that has his people in bondage. The scripture says, let my people go. Now, I want you to watch this seriously because I think part of our problem as black people is that we don't take this book the way that we ought to take this book, right? right so we got to start taking this book the way we ought to take this book because we're God's chosen people. Does everybody understand it? Mm -hmm. So now, if we're in fact God's chosen people, that means God, Lena, has placed something on us yes. that he hasn't placed on yes. other people. Yes. Now, you can take it or you can let it alone, but the fact of the matter is God has given us something that he just has given everybody. Can I show you in the scripture? Ain't no doubt I can show you. Watch this. So now look at this. So it says he sent Moses to go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, my is a possessive pronoun. It is not all inclusive. It is singular as it relates to our understanding of mathematics which leads us into grammar and language. So if we understand that my is an individual personal pronoun, God is saying, Brother Abels, that he has a specific group of people that's called my people that are in bondage under the authority of Pharaoh. Are y'all following this? Okay, ain't no tricks to this. This is straightforward. Now, you may want to know, why did God tell Moses to let his people go? God and Moses, I mean God and Pharaoh are battling. Pharaoh don't want to let those people go. That's right. Because those people are doing too much to ancient Egypt back then. Mm -hmm. So Pharaoh don't want to let the people go. So Moses now has been given the task of going to Pharaoh and challenging Pharaoh to let his people go. Yes, ma'am. That's a brilliant question. But I want to share with you that the Bible is brilliant. <laughs> and I'm going to show you why. Okay, Alright, so just bear with me. You have questions, sister? Uh, just a comment, basically. But you're saying how God is saying to Moses, tell Pharaoh that my people are. Absolutely. But there's also a scripture that said that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Yeah, he did. So, I'm thinking all of that plays into us being that peculiar people. We had to, he had to harden Pharaoh's heart to make it us return back to God. Yes, ma'am. So I'm thinking that he already knew the plan. Of course. <laughs> this is God Almighty we're dealing with. <laughs> but to show his glory. Yes, ma'am. He you had to go through something. See the people had to be dragged. Right? <laughs> and he, he hardened Pharaoh's heart so that Pharaoh wouldn't be sensitive to the people. Yeah, okay. He had to harden his heart in order for the people to be dragged, to be destroyed. Right, right. Remember now, we're really coming from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 13, where it says that Abraham, no of surety that thou see, shall be a stranger okay. in a land that's not theirs. Then the scripture goes on to say they will be afflicted. Do you know what it means okay. to be afflicted? Yeah. They will be afflicted 
for 400 years. Then if you go to the book of Daniel chapter 3 and we start running down by the 15th verse and it talks about the Hebrew boys that were in the fiery furnace. They weren't literally in a fiery furnace, but the Hebrew boys were exposed to circumstances that were so strong that once the heat shit hit them, it reformed them. Listen, so when heat hits something, it never remains the same. Do you know they use heat, Tony, to melt gold? So if we understand that heat can transform gold, mm -hmm. what do you think it can do to us? See, our God was masterful, yes, right? Yes. And we have to understand that when God starts taking you through something, Sister Rachel, the reason why he's taking you through it is so that you can come out a new creature. Are y'all following me? Yes. So now in understanding that, it says that I want to separate my people. How do we know he's talking specifically? Can I get bold? How do we know yes. we're talking specifically about black folk? Let me show you. But while I show you, this is what you cannot do. You cannot alter God's word. Uh -huh. Now, once we show you in the scripture who God is talking to, mm -hmm. don't be embarrassed. Okay. Don't be hesitant about embracing who God is talking to. Uh -huh. Now, we already know that God says my people, uh -huh. which lets us know that there's another people out there that outside I of yeah. my people. That's right. Now, if you go to the book of Exodus, and if you go to the fourth chapter in Exodus, God tells Moses, because he has to build courage up. He says, Moses, put your hand in your bosom. Boom. Put it in his bosom. Then he says to Moses, pull it out. When Moses pulled it out, it says that his hand was what? Leprous, white as snow. Then he, then he said, put your hand back in your bosom. Pull it back out. It went back to its original color. So what we understand from that, listen, please don't get angry, but what we understand from that is that God were not leprous. Okay. Come on, somebody. Okay. We understand it from that alone. Not only do we understand it from that, but we can also look at what was happening. Now, Moses' father was from the tribe of Levi, and they come up out of a place called what? Egypt. Egypt comes from a Greek word called Kemet. Stand up, son. It comes from a Greek word called Kemet. Now, what does Kemet mean? Land of the blood. Say it loud so everybody can hear you. Land of the blood. Land of the blood. That's a beautiful question. I want to show you something real quick. Now watch this. My people, right? I want y'all to let me go today. Let me be free, okay? So it says, my people, that they may serve me. Did you catch that? Yeah. Lee, so his people that were in bondage were being forced to serve somebody else. God, I mean, look at here. They're being forced to serve somebody else. So it wasn't so much that slavery was brutal. Open it up. It was so much that we couldn't serve our God. So in order for us to serve our God, we got to let ourselves go now. See, because Pharaoh has already let us go, but we are refusing to let Pharaoh go. But we're in the day where we have to let Pharaoh go. Now, my topic today is the new king that knew not Joseph. Stay with me for a second. Now, let me get into this thing a little bit. I want to show you something. Uh, real quick. Now, so sister asked a brilliant question, right? She says, how do we know? Right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to show sister how we know. So look at this. So now, if you look at Herodotus, right? He was a Greek, right? But Herodotus traveled into what we call ancient Egypt, where my ancestors come from, and Herodotus studied there for about 12 years. Aristotle studied there for about 20 years. Socrates studied there uh, for about the same amount of time. And then we have Pythagoras, the great mathematician that studied there. All of the Greek writings, theology, and understanding come from where? Come from Kenneth. It was the ground. Who, who's ever heard of the first college that was ever uh, created? It's called Timbuktu. Oh, that's in Africa. And this is where they went to train and study. Now, look at what Herodotus has to say here. What Herodotus is saying right here is this. In describing the ancient Egyptians, right? And it gives you the, the page number for the book. I'll get to that. Egyptians and Nubians have thick lips. Are y'all listening? They have broad noses. They have woolly hair, right? So he's telling you what their features look like. Mm -hmm. Now, if Herodotus, the great historian that everybody references, if he describes them that way, why do we have a problem with accepting what he's describing? Mm -hmm. 
And then it runs right in line with what Moses demonstrated when he put his hand in his bosom. But I want you to catch this. Who got their Bible? Sister, can you go back to Revelations 1 and 14 real quick? Then I'm going to move on. Go to Revelation. Yeah, you Lynn. Go to Revelations 1 and 14 real quick. 1 and 14. See, see, what we got to stop doing. we got to stop this. I'm telling you right now. we got to stop. we got to stop running from who we are and embrace who we are. We're God's chosen people. Hands down. Hands down. But, but in order for us to get what God has for us, we have to accept it. The mere fact that we don't accept it means that we're still in bondage. And it means that you're confirming that Pharaoh let us go physically, but we're still tied to him because we're worshiping his gods by not accepting who we are. Black people in the United States of America are in fact God's chosen people. Go ahead, sister. Revelation 1.14. Yes, ma'am. His head and his hairs were white like wool. But the texture of his hair was white. The yes. color of the hair was white, but the texture was like wool. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, mm -hmm. and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. Now stop right there. You ain't got to go no further. Have anybody ever seen anything burnt in an oven? <laughs> Anything burnt in and up. Now, if you go to Revelations 1 and 1, let's make this clear who we're talking about here. Because John was given this, Revelations 1 and 1. Just read 1 and 1 Revelations real quick. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation of who? Jesus Christ. So this is describing who? Jesus Christ. It's okay. It's describing Jesus Christ. This is a revelation that was given to John. Go ahead. Revelation of, of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ, which gave God unto him. That's good right there. We're talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this description is talking about Jesus Christ. Now I can show you also in Revelations, where in the book of Daniel, where God is being described very similar. But okay, let's roll. So when we look at this description, so you're asking if we are those people, right? Mm -hmm. Now Jesus was from which tribe? Judah. Judah. Judah had to go into captivity. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Right. Now here's a serious question. Were your ancestors in captivity? Yes, sir. Okay, good. All right, so let's keep rolling because I know that's not enough. Let me go ahead and, and stay with the, uh, with the lecture and get right to it. All right, so here's what we have. The lecture title today, family, is the king that knew not Joseph. And we're actually in that day. And I'm going to show you some more parallels to give more credence to the subject matter. All right, so let's look at this. Beautiful question. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7 and verse 6, look at what it says. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people for himself above all other nations on the face of the earth. Right or wrong? Right. Check out the language. Above all other nations. Mm -hmm. So these people that we're conversing about were chosen above all other nations on the face of the earth, according to the scripture. Mm -hmm. So God is telling you again that he's talking about a singular group of people because he says that I chose these people for myself. Now, for those of you that are saying he's talking about anybody that accepts Christ, okay, I understand the New Testament teaching. We're going to deal with that. But what I want you to understand is that God is not just talking about a spiritual people. Right. He's talking about lineage. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Watch this. Check out Exodus again. Book of Exodus, chapter 6. 2 verse 9. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord that appealed unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But, but by my name Jehovah was not unknown to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers and, and have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel whom the Egyptians keep in bondage. And I have remembered my covenant, wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out of the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And I will take you to be, I will take to you for my people, and I will be your God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So these people that God have chosen, family, are the ones that were in bondage. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Yes. 
No, yeah. everybody can't claim that. That's right. Let me take it a step further. We're going to wrap it up. Look at this right here. Let's get into the subject matter. We're talking about being in the day when this new king knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. Right? We're in the day where this new king knew not Joseph. Let me show you. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and, and the land was filled with them. And there rose a new king over Egypt. Stop. You see, we're talking about the children of Israel, right? Increasing abundantly in a land called Egypt. One of the first things we have to prove is who is Israel and where is Egypt? Mm -hmm. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Let me stop right there for a second. Let me prove it. Let's take a ride real quick. Here's where I want to be. Now, king, forget the crown, he was governor in Pharaoh's house over Egypt. King, king, king. This is the new king right here. Who's the president of the United States? This is Pharaoh's house. I'm ready to prove it to you. This is the modern day Egypt. Look at this. Now, this king knew not Joseph. If, figuratively speaking, parabolically speaking, hieroglyphically speaking, President Obama represented the physical representation of Joseph, then can we prove it? And then can we prove that the new president that came on the scene didn't know him? What does it mean not to know somebody? Anybody know? Not to recognize them. Any, anything else? No kinship with them. Anything else? Not on the same frequency. Not on the same page. Strangers are alike. Right? Now watch this. It says, the Obama era rule, which did not require congressional approval, would have given the EEOC more reach and efforts to investigate firms. I did a tracking. What I'm trying to show you is that everything that President Obama passed, he's been trying to remove. Y'all already know that. I ain't got to go through all this stuff. You already know that. He's been trying since he's been in office to get rid of Obamacare. You already know that. The biggest recipient, some of the biggest recipients of Obamacare, of the 22 million people that are on it, are people that look like me and you. That's right. So he's trying to remove everything that President Obama legislated. Why? Because he don't know. Them. What do you mean you don't know? Them? They're not on the same page spiritually. Yes. Okay. All right. I don't have to go through all that. Okay, good. Here we go again. They don't look the same. They're not of the same bloodline. Here we go again. Now, let me show you that this is Egypt. Because I know many of us are still a little bit confused when it comes to this thing. All you got to do is pull out your currency. That dollar bill. Where does this symbol come from? Egypt. Egypt. I'm not going to get into what it means today because that's not what this is about, but I can break it. Where does this symbol come from? Come on. Where it come from, Tony? Uh, that's that's the eagle. E eagle, but where does it come from? America. Who? America. America. Okay, watch this. It, it represents the flag of America, but it comes out of where? Africa. Egypt. Oh okay, watch this. My eye. Look at this. You see? You see? This is the flag of America right here. Now, this is the flag of Egypt. There's a bird on it. Some say it's a falcon. Some say it's an eagle. America don't have a bird on it, but what's the symbol for America? The eagle. Right? Where do we see that in the Bible? In the book of Revelation, chapter 18. In the book of Revelation, chapter 13. So watch this right here. This right here is the bird that comes out of America. It's the eagle. This is the falcon. But well, here's what I want you to catch. Look at this. And look at this. This right here is referred to as, a, as the, uh, the, the sun disk, right? Now, don't get tricky into thinking that it's the sun. No, the sun disk, what it represents is a person who has mastered the pineal and the thalamus gland. That's what the third eye, this is what this represents, right? It also represents the star of David, right? This also represents the star of David. Let me show it to you. Look at this right here. See this top? Go down here, right here, and back up. Then you start at the bottom, right? Same thing. It represents the star of David. But it also, it represents the light, right? The sun, the sun disk. Same concept, but in ancient Africa, this, this sun disk represents the thalamus gland and it represents the pineal gland or the third eye, right? So what I'm trying to show you is that this is in fact Egypt. So if this is Egypt, I'll show you something else. If this is Egypt, 
then when we're talking about a people being in bondage called the children of Israel, then we ought to see them in Egypt. Okay, all right, y'all ain't ready yet. Watch this. Let me go further. Is this coincidental? This is the Nile River, right? How, how long is it? Young brothers. Who got it? Who, do, who remember how long is it? Young brothers. If you don't stand up, young brothers. What you got? Loud, son. Come on, man. 4,200 miles. 4,200 miles long, right? Now look, this is the Nile River and starting in what you call Lower Egypt, going down to Upper Egypt. Now this is in reverse of what we're taught today. You're taught that up this way would be the north and this would be the south. But the reason why this is called Upper Egypt is because this is where civilization started. It started here and it migrated up. Civilization started around the Ethiopian region. According to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 through 14, talks about God creating Adam and placing him in the garden. And that, that land encompasses all the land, or that river encompasses all the land of Ethiopia. So when you look over here, check this out. Is this coincidental? You see Memphis? Memphis, Tennessee. Right? I'm asking you, is this Egypt? You can argue and say it's not, but it is. Memphis, Memphis, Egypt. Memphis, Tennessee. The Mississippi River. Uh -huh. The Nile River. Okay. Pyramids under the Nile. Mm -hmm. Pyramids under the Mississippi. Don't okay. tell me this ain't Egypt. Okay. You tell me our ancestors didn't know what they were doing? Mm -hmm. No, brother. We don't understand what they were doing yet. But God is revealing. <laughs> Watch this. Egypt. Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember the story about Sodom and Gomorrah? The debate that you did was so great. Men could be with men. Women could be with women. Like it wasn't no big deal. Do you know America leads the world in that? Yeah. Are y'all listening? Yeah. Do you know America leads the world in that arena? Do you know that America has told other countries if they don't pass laws that's conducive to homosexuality, they will cut their foreign aid off? Mm. Sodom and Gomorrah, modern day. Huh. Did you know that men could get married in this country? Women could get married in this country? Did you know that? We're heading down the line of serious sexual debauchery. What do I mean? I, I can't take credit for this because who my Johnson turned me on to this? They're working on legislation where grown men can marry 13-year-old women, 13-year-old children. <laughs> They're already working on legislation. So we're heading down a serious road but we can't give into that as a people. That's right. Because that's not who we are. Let me keep going. So what I'm trying to show you here, that you know the main countries that are not endorsing homosexuality? Most of them are in Africa and the Middle East, although they're joined by some Caribbean and Southeast Asian nations. Mm -hmm. The majority of the countries that endorse homosexuality are European countries. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to perpetuate that propaganda on all the world. Mm -hmm. And we're participating and allowing it to happen. Watch this. It's right here. This, this was taken, I think, in 2000, early 2000. Should society accept homosexuality? Canada, 80% of them said yes. United States, 60% of them said yes. Spain, 88. Look, Germany, 87. So forth and so on. Look down here. South Africa, 32% said yes. Kenya, 8%. Nigeria, 1%. But what I want you to see is the debauchery that was happening over there then is here in the United States of America. Now, I'm going to show you this is Egypt. I have a question. Tyon, how did our ancestors get here? Slave ships. William, how old are you? Three? How did they get here? Slave ships, right? Tony, 12. Nashad, 13. How did they get here? Slave ships. Now watch this. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. How? Now, listen at the language. Again. As if you were in Egypt once before. Do you know you were in Egypt once before? Do you know that before 1618, your butt was in a place called Jerusalem, North Africa? And then when the European invaders came from the north, they forced you into West Africa, which later became known as Negro land, Judea land. You were the original inhabitants of what you call Jerusalem. The people that are there now that call themselves Jews. Revelations 2 and 9. They are not Jews. You are the original Hebrew Israelites, but you haven't been taught that. But if we read this book carefully, it will tell us this. Now watch this. What am I showing you? 
all of the symbols, right? All of the symbols that were in ancient Egypt are in modern Egypt. Anybody got any questions so far? So when you look at Sodom and Gomorrah, that's the coffin right there. It's sealed. The coffin is sealed. You look at the same things that are happening, that were happening in Sodom and Gomorrah happening right now in the United States of America. Okay. Y'all all right? Okay, good. So it says, the Lord shall bring into Egypt again with ships. Because at one point, the whole continent of Africa was called Egypt. Now, now let me show you how serious this is. Now, I studied a book called the Book of the Dead. It's right here, right? Which, is, which predates the Bible by about 10,000 years. But both the Book of the Dead and the Bible are etched on the pyramid walls, right? No, no getting around that. So, in the Book of the Dead, it, it tells a story, but it tells it a different way. It doesn't use the word ship. It says that they were floated down a Nile in a coffin. <laughs> but but uh, Osiris was cut up into 14 pieces. Are you, are you following me? Now, I want to show you something critical. You see this? Right here? These, this is 13 levels right to right here. This is the 14th level. What am I telling you? That America didn't have 13 colonies, there were 14 colonies. The last one was called Nova Scotia that they got rid of. But there are 13 colonies that we deal with now, but there were 14 at one point. It's reflective of the 14 pieces that Osiris was cut into. Now, this right here, Osiris was recognized, and Haru, they were recognized by the symbol that Sister Lena called the third eye, which is the pineal gland, which is the God organ, right? This is what this is. Do you know the symbol that the American for, uh, founding fathers were fighting over for America was Moses on a chariot parting the Red Sea? That was one of the original symbols for America. But why did they do that? Because the founding fathers of this nation, they knew who you were. You just don't know who you were. <laughs> now, watch this. Let's keep rolling. Y'all all right so far? Okay, good. So, so we came in the ships, right? No other race can fit that. The people over there that call themselves Jews, brother, they walked into Germany. <laughs> you know what I mean? They won't own no ships. Revelations 2, 9. You got it? 9, yes. I know thy works. You know thy what? I know thy works. Okay. And tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not but are the synagogue of Satan. Now stop for a second. That is not my right. I didn't write that. I didn't tell her to write it. I didn't tell her to read it like that. This is the scripture. Jesus talked. He said, there are those that call themselves Jews. But they are from, what do you worship? Do you go to a church or a synagogue? Usually. Come on somebody. A church. The Bible was telling us, Sister Javel, that these people that call themselves Jews are from the synagogue. Of Satan. Now, a synagogue is a temple, right? But what the scripture is telling us that within that temple is satanic worship. That's right. Go to Revelation 3 and 9. Now, so all I'm telling you is this, right? We got to own who we are, family. Uh -huh. Right? Now, if it says right here, watch this. It says, and, and for those of you that still might not rock with it, it says, Thou you shall see it no more again, and there you will be sold <laughs> unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Now, there's a reason why I collect these. Mm -hmm. Because they're telling us that within the next 30 to 40 years, people won't even know that slavery existed. A whole family for $2,500. What? Your aunt, yes, ma'am. A whole family for $2,500. Your ancestors were sold. Right? What I'm trying to show you is you are, in fact, Israel. You are. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, now, if we understand that, what else do we have? Okay, watch this. You got three and nine? Three and nine. The whole, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not. But do not, behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. Now, the Bible is telling us that these people that say that they're Jews and do lie, right? Mm -hmm. They're not. They're lying. Mm -hmm. But God is going to make it so they will come and worship at our feet. Now, the only thing that book left out is again. It don't say again, does it? No, it doesn't. Because they once worshiped at our feet. <laughs> Isaiah 14 and 2 when you get a chance. Let me keep rolling. All right. Thank you so much, sister. I really appreciate it. So, everybody with me so far? Yeah. Now, we're still dealing with the, this new king, the day of the new king that knew not Joseph. Can we go now? Mm -hmm. I needed to prove to you first that 
that this is Egypt. Now I got some more stuff. Does anybody disagree that this is if you disagree this is Egypt, raise your hand. It's okay. Okay, sister disagree. Let me go a step further. Okay. Now, sister, do you agree with this right here? Okay, all right. This is the scripture. Right? So if we want to know what Egypt looks like, now let me back up. Do you agree that our ancestors came over here on slaves? As slaves? Okay. Now, do you agree that our ancestors once lived in Egypt? Yes. Okay. So, why don't you see this as Egypt? What's missing? I don't have a full understanding. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. Okay, we get back with you on that day. But let me keep rolling some more. Watch this. You know what this is, man? Where do you see the symbol? Where does the symbol come from? Where does this come from? The pyramid walls. Hieroglyphics. These are slaves. And you know how long the books, you know how long it's scribed that they will be in captivity? This is on the pyramid walls. 400 years. Now you find me somebody that complexion that was in captivity before. So this is a prophecy of the pyramid wall. The prophecy of the pyramid wall. The biblical prophecy of the pyramid. So the hieroglyphics that are on the pyramid. Is prophecy. The Bible in and of itself. Most theologians will agree. That 75% of the scriptures in the Bible are prophetic. 25% of them are historical. That means that the prophecies are being fulfilled right now. Alright, let me show you some more. Alright, watch this. Now, we asked the question about Egypt. Right? But just jump down. It says, Egyptian hieroglyphic for the Illuminati goddess Isis Osiris. Isis Cyrus is a star and an oval and obliques all dawn together in Washington, D.C. But what I'm trying to get you to see is the symbols, right, that laid out Washington, D.C. are right here. They come from Egypt, right? See, it's important that we understand where Egypt is in order for us to understand where Israel is, right? Now, now watch this. Young brothers, who laid out the blueprint for Washington? Stand up if you know. Y'all know, you just forgot. Who laid it out? Benjamin Banneker, young sister. <laughs> Look, Benjamin Banneker laid it out. Did you know Benjamin Banneker was a slave? Yeah. He precisely laid out Washington, D.C. to match what? Egypt. Egypt. So where are we? Egypt. Ain't no doubt about it. We're in that mystery Egypt. Now watch this. The Egyptian hieroglyphic of Osiris consists of three shapes. And five points da da da. All I'm trying to show you is that all of this right here is e Egypt. All of this is. One more. You know who that is? Look, look at his apron. Freemasonry. Egypt. 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 But where would he get that from? Where would he get what from? That apron. Yeah, the early forefathers. They celebrated and practiced the Egyptian masonry system, yeah. which later became uh, masonry. Okay. Right? Which later became masonry. Now they mess, made a mockery out of it. It ain't, you know, ain't nothing to it. But all of these symbols on the side are linked directly to Egyptian history. Now who is this man? I'm trying to Jefferson. show you where y'all are. Thomas Jefferson. Now Thomas Jefferson, right? Now let me ask you a question. President. Now, if it's good enough for Thomas Jefferson to read this, this is your book. Why can't we read it? Right? Well, I'm just asking a question. This is a mathematical book. But so is the Bible. And Thomas Jefferson and the, uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson referenced the Quran. He had his own Quran. All of the early founding fathers in this country studied Islam. Now I'm not trying to convert y'all, but I think what this is about. What I'm trying to show you is that also is your culture. Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. Genesis. All right, let's go back up now. Now, I know that sister is is, is kind of hesitant about accepting that this is Egypt, no problem. But I'm gonna, if it's okay with brother and sister, I'm gonna offline, don't have to be today, deal with y'all some more on that subject. Keep, deal with y'all some more on that subject, right? Now watch this. Let's look at this thing some more. Okay, y'all all right? All right, so now, remember now, I'm showing you that there's a new king that didn't know Joseph. And this new king was in Egypt. Now I just demonstrated how America becomes Egypt. 
China can't get this. China can't fit this. Russia can't fit this. The only nation that can really fit this is the United States of America. All right, watch this. Now, listen now. It says, now there arose a new king up over Egypt. Now, I showed you that this is Egypt, which knew not Joseph. One of the things that, one of the reasons why we know he didn't know Joseph is if you remember, he, the, one of the first things Donald Trump started saying is that President Obama wasn't born in the United States of America. His birth certificate, right? Letting you know that he was clueless, right? Saying that he wasn't born in the United States of America. He doesn't have a legitimate birth certificate. He spent years and tons of money trying to justify that lie. Now watch this. And he said, now who said it? The, the man that knew not Joseph is king. Now look at what he said. He said unto his people. Now did it. Now God has a people and the king of Egypt got a people. Watch this. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we are. Check it out. You saw Charlottesville, North Carolina, Virginia. President Obama, I mean, President Trump got that response because the alt-right, the ultra-conservatives are his people. Okay, let's go a little slow. Now, the Jew will not replace us. Y'all remember that chant? Where'd that come from? The all right. The Jew, they, they Jew. But look, see, here's what the world will miss. That they weren't talking about the Jew that's in Revelation 2 and 9. Revelation 3 and 9. They were talking about you. You, Jew, will not replace them. Watch this. The children of Israel are more mightier than us. What's another word? The Jews in Israel are more mightier than we are. Now, what does it mean to be mightier? Now, eventually, quickly, we can say stronger. But there's more to it than that. Stronger, smarter, <laughs> wiser, more spiritual. All of this because the Bible bears us witness to this. So when you heard the chant, the Jew will not replace us, what he was telling us is that those people that are in, the, in Israel, in Egypt, that are the true Jews, they won't replace us. Now remember, the reason why I put these white boys on the stand like this, right here. No. The reason why I put them on is because, and, I, and I'm showing you something. See, they know all of this. Remember now, Brother Liverman, there was a chariot with Moses on it, parting the Red Sea with slaves on the back. That was going to be one of the American symbols according to the Founding Fathers, right? But watch this. So, when you see me put this up here, like this, I'm letting you know that they know. They know. They know. Look, these cats right here, they know who you are. You don't know who you are. And because you don't know who you are, yet they stole your identity and they're running away with your identity. So when it says the Jew will not replace us, you are the Jew that they're fearful with that will replace them. But watch this. God is not a man that he should lie. Huh? If God said his people are going into bondage with ships, guess what? Isn't that how you went into bondage? If God said that he will take his people and move them back to their own land, guess what? you going back to your own land. 14 2 for me. It's, uh, Isaiah, right? Isaiah 14 2. Okay, go. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Now stop for a second. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Their T H E I R. Not T H E R E. T H E I R. Ownership. Go ahead. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. Now stop. Now I know a lot of us don't want to accept this. Those other people, Donald Trump's people, will be the servants and handmaid of the children of Israel. Now call the Bible a lie. Go ahead. Call it a lie. Because this is biblical. The Bible is letting us know the prophecy. This is Isaiah 14 and 2. We will possess them as handmaids and servants. Go ahead, sister. And they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. What the Bible was telling us is that the people that were taken into captivity would take those people captives that were in captivity. Now, I will tell you, we won't do it to them like they did to us. Right. I, we, we're not going to do that. Okay, sister, you don't have to go further. Okay, so when we look at the word, watch this. In Genesis 25 and 23, I want to deal with body and stronger briefly. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other. Right? And this is where we get the separation of the two races, the two nations, right? Esau and Jacob. Esau is the progenitor of a white race. Edomite 
is the progenitor of a white nation. So what you see right here, the Bible is telling us in Genesis that there's going to be one people who's stronger than the other. Am I trying to make a, a fight between black and white? No. no. No, I'm not shallow like that. No, talk to me on the spiritual side. I'm just breaking the Bible. Now, we can discount it and say it don't exist. Okay, I can rock with that if that's what you want to say. But the fact of the matter is, this is biblical. Now, watch this. So what we see right now is that these people are going to be stronger than the other people that they're serving, right? We see that. Now, watch this. So now, as we continue to go with the scripture, look at this. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. We're stronger. Right? That's the real fear. Not just stronger physically, but we're wiser. We are the most spiritual people. And most scientists will agree with this. We're the most spiritual people on the face of the earth. I don't care where you are. When black people have problems, the first thing they do is pray. That's right. Amen. You can be the biggest hellraiser rhino in the world. When you got issues, you're going to pray. Amen. All right. Amen. Now, it says, he said unto him, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mighty than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. This is very important that you understand this. Remember, there's a new king that knew not Joseph. Mm -hmm. So this new king that don't know Joseph, his wives dealing Laura is going to be different on how Joseph would deal with them. So if you remember, when Joseph was in office, one of the things that he was trying to do was pass legislation that was more comforting to the children of Israel. Health care, educational programs, right? Extending these laws so that you can sue companies when they get you wrong, and so forth and so on. These are the kind of things that conscious men make. But what we see with uh, this new king, he destroying everything. Now watch this. Look at this. Remember, the issue here is that they're more mightier than we are. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when war fall out any war, they join also unto our enemies. Who would be considered Donald Trump's enemies? Us. Black people? Children of Israel. Children of Israel. Anybody's not white. Any foreign. El Salvadorians. Mexicans. Haitians. Right? Ethiopian. So now what we see is that he makes the comment, we don't why you got these people from shithole countries coming here? Why don't you go get people from this lily white nation? What was it called? Norway. Norway. Why don't you go get people? For, then he tried to justify it. Some of the people said, well, he wanted educated people. Do you know the, where, the people who are most educated in all of the world? The daggone Nigerians. Look, the Nigerians got more PhDs than any other group per capita than anybody in the world. So what are you really saying? Some of the hardest working people that you receive are the Haitians. Now, there's another reason why he don't want the Haitians here, but I'm not going to deal with it today. All right, so watch this. And the people said unto him, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let me show you how they deal wisely real quick. Now, now check this out. All of you can bear witness to this. Some of the wise dealings that they do. I'm finishing up in about 10 minutes. Just bear with me, please. Wise dealing. Dealing in deceit. Remember crack cocaine? That was wise dealing. Why is that wise dealing? Because they wanted to control and reduce your birth, rate, birth population growth rate. Right? By introducing drugs into your community. You know the prison system? With 13% of the population, but 50% of the prison system. See, this is why I was dealing, right? Education. You have, the, you have the highest dropout rate. You do. More than any other group of people in this country. You got it. You're the most miseducated. Diet. Your diet is killing you. All of us are guilty of it, right? So look, justice system. There's a report called the Kerner Commission Report that comes out every single year that says black people, it's been coming out since Johnson was in office in the 60s, that says that black people still get more time for the same crime that white folk do. Wise deal. Watch this. Pause and water. What am I talking about? Flint, Michigan. Don't you know? Perfect. Perfect. But don't you know that the scientists that were there knew that the water was poison and toxic? Mm -hmm. But they didn't say anything because they didn't think it was going to be found out? But don't you know God is exposing the devil today? Yes, that's yes, right, that's right, right. Medical, what do I mean medical? This is serious. So, man, I'm telling you, boy, this is real. I learned so much in the past 20 years, but here's what I'm telling you medically. They got food hmm. and chemicals that they can put in the food to cause high blood pressure with you, but not them. Exactly. They got stuff they can put in the food right now to give you diabetes, but not them. 
Now, I know that some of you may say, boy, you crazy. You, you, yeah, I am crazy. But, what I, but this is real, right? <laughs> Medically, we know that they can dope the food to have one effect on you, but not on them. I wish our scientists, Dodo, Dr. Dodo, would, and, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 I was going to ask you, okay, I believe that, but how can they separate it, like, when you go to the supermarket, how can they do it? Mm. Not no, 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 no. Up, it's the chemical. Bait. The yeah. chemicals. Yeah. There you the go. The chemical. The how chemical. it's set up. The chemical base. It'll activate based on how much uh, uh, carbon so is in your blood. The question is how much carbon is in your blood. I don't think it's the same issue. Same food. Eat the same thing. Same food. Same food. You and it won't bother me. This is what it's for. Absolutely. That's why a lot of times you go to doctor. I've learned the first thing you've got to put down your medical history and your ethnic makeup. I mean, it's one of the first things that they ask you. But the fact of the matter is. We know it, but look, now they're not gonna go, you ain't gonna, they're not gonna come out and openly tell you this, but it's called chemical warfare, biological warfare. This is what it really boils down to. They're not gonna come out and openly tell you this, but I will tell you this right now. I, I deal with a lot of scientists, right? But I will tell you right now, but one of the most notable, smartest scientists that I deal with live right here in Hereford. No offense, Dr. Dotto, but he, they live right here in Hereford, yes. right? One of the baddest scientists out here. He told me this in 1986. And it's when I was in the science class, he stops by and we talk hard on this subject matter. I'm one of his favorite students. Why would he lie to me about this science? That's and then, not only that, when I was doing research and development in Silicon Valley, I saw, I made the chemicals alter their nature to have one effect on one subject and a different effect on another subject. So I know it's real. We can change the nature of these chemicals. But what that also tells you is that God made us different. Y'all don't want to accept that. <laughs> that God made us different. Mm -hmm. Because if we weren't different, it would have the same effect, right? Bottom line. Okay, let me keep rolling. Now watch this. Let me show you something real here, right here real quick. So, so now, when we look at the wise dealing, the wise dealing, the CDC. Anybody remember that report in late 2000? That increased autism amongst black boys by 330%. By 330%. What was that? What was that virus called? That vaccine called? MMR. MMR. Increased autism with black boys by 330%. Now, if we're not different, how could they do that? Talk. How could they do it? If we're not different, how could they do it? But the fact of the matter is. They're able to manipulate things to have one effect on you and no effect on them. But don't you know God watching him? Mm -hmm. And don't you know the harder he is on you, the harder God's going to be on him? Don't you understand, brothers and sisters, that God is not going to spare the wicked? The wicked will, in fact, be punished. That's right. Watch this. Look, you know about eugenics? I'm a living testimony. Here's the article right here. That's my mama and that's me. Y'all all know the story. Look, don't you tell me this dude ain't no damn devil. Excuse my language. Don't you tell me he ain't no devil. Say you don't understand his devil is ways. And you come and talk to me, I'll show you he the devil. Now, if this right here, right? I'm not boasting. I made all A's in college. All A's. Go ahead, boast. Well, I ain't boasting. I'm not boasting. And they told my mother... See, this is the wise deal. See, black folk don't know how to deal wise yet. But we're going to get it. They told my mother that they didn't want her to have any more children because they would be feeble-minded like her. Now, my mother is far from feeble-minded. My mother dropped out of high school but graduated college. Feeble-minded, right? I'm all A's in college. My son makes all A's, right? Hold on, and watch this. What I'm telling you is that he's wise and he understands Genetic wisdom. Listen, he understands what needs to be done to produce high thinking people. He understands it. You don't understand it. Listen, there's a science to baby making. We don't understand the science. They understand the science. What am I telling you? Look, so they did the eugenics program with the whole intent to reduce the black population birth rate. That's why the scripture says, come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let us deal with them in a way that everybody don't really understand what's going on until it's too late. 
But you know that fool don't know that God watching him like that? Mm -hmm. He thinks that he gonna literally get away. That's right. You can you imagine a thief breaking in your house? Mm -hmm. He looking and don't realize you got cameras all around the house. That's right. And he going in the house taking his time, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the police. But anyway, this is about where we are. Tuskegee experiment. Y'all know about that? I'll have to tell you about that. Y'all know about Planned Parenthood. You know that 80% of all Planned Parenthoods are in the black community. You know that. You know that there are 1,300 abortions every day by black women. Every single day. You know that. But yet we're only 12, 13% of the population. He's trying to control your growth population birth rate. But even with that, please understand, when he said they were, we were more mightier than them, what he's also saying is that his birth population growth rate is less than zero. That means that for every one of them dies, Sister Rachel, nobody is born. Every one of them that dies, there's not enough. So when one dies and another one is born, your birth population rate is one. Right? When somebody dies with them, it's not another one born. He understands that if he can control your birth rate, mm -hmm. that he can influence the political scene in the United States of America. This is why he wants to ban Muslims from coming into the country. Because the majority of Muslims, they, they, they look like Thomas Jefferson. No, they look like me and you. Mm -hmm. And they know that once you start bringing people in from Haiti, from Nigeria, and we start having uh, 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 babies with other people, that our birth population growth rate will continue to grow. So his objective is to stop that. So this new king, that new not Joseph, this is what he's doing. It's always been in place, but this guy has pressed on the accelerator now. Roll back all up. Obama was reaching out to Cuba. He had Haitians that 60,000 of them was just recently getting ready to get an extension on their citizenship. Obama said no. I mean, uh, uh, Trump said no. Cuba, dark country. Obama had been reaching out to them. All of that's cut off. All of the communication with the dark nations are cut off. And the reason why it's cut off, Sister Jennings, is because they're dealing wise with, wisely with us. And because our growth birth rate is so much higher than theirs, then they're nervous. Right? So the Latinos are considered his enemies. Right? So watch this. And fight against us. And so they say, get them up out of the land. He getting ready to send back 200,000 El Salvadorians. 200,000. 60,000 Haitians. I don't know how many Mexicans are getting ready to get. But this is what's happening. So what I'm trying to show you is that the Bible is real. It's prophetical. It's showing us exactly what's happening. But we're not noticing the signs. We're just kind of acting like it's not really happening. Watch this. Right? It says, therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities. You know, we built most of the major cities in this country. We did. <laughs> the slave. Right? We built most of the major cities in this country, including Washington, D.C. Now, let's keep going. Any questions so far? Any comments? Any questions? Any comments? Are y'all with me so far? Yes. Okay, good. 